Hello and welcome to another edition of After Further Review. I am your host, William Hatzel, and alongside me today are Alex Cravat, Cody Emerson, and Zach Kyleman. Today we will be talking about some rumors and moves that are already happening here in this past week as we continue to approach NFL free agency. Now remember, these shows will be recorded every Saturday afternoon and will be uploaded to social media, SoundCloud, and our Cardinal Sports Live website, bsucsl.com, within a few days. So gentlemen, how are you all doing on this lovely Saturday? It's solid. Not, it's not a lovely Saturday. It's snowing. I'm from Wisconsin, and I enjoy it. So, oh yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. I t- tell you what, tell you what. This, I mean, I'm from the region, which if any of you might not know, me and Will are both from the region here, mm-hmm. and that's uh, Northwest Indiana, which the people consider like a small sibling to Chicago. But yeah, pretty much the same thing as you, Alex. It's uh, it's I enjoy the snow. You know, my mom not so much, but hey, hey, I'm okay with it. I just don't like the snow in general. I'm more of a spring, summer guy. I've lived in Indi- <clears throat> Indiana all my life, but I mean, I just don't like cold weather. I mean, I it was 70 yesterday, and now <laughs> today it's snowing and like 30 degrees. So yeah. obviously, Bi- I'm kind of just like, what's much? going on? I'm, I'm not liking it. I enjoy spring and summer at this point. After, after Christmas, I don't care about you know winter <laughs> anymore. Or the snow. So we yeah. can move. You know, we can we can just move on to the next season here, but. I guess not, but it's okay, uh, you know, to cope with the weather, always talking about sports is nice, so, all right, well, guys, let's get the ball rolling here, so some interesting headlines and moves, like I said, already popped up in the NFL, despite being about two weeks away still from the start of free agency, which will be uh, beginning over our spring break, so we're going to examine a few of these moves today, uh, to start off, let's talk about Jay Cutler and the Chicago Bears, now, it was stated earlier this week that the Bears are looking to trade Cutler, and it continues to look more and more like the Bears are going to go in a different direction here at the quarterback position. It's rumored that Jay might even retire. This rumor just came out a couple of days ago. Not too much has been said about this from the team or Jay himself, but it makes you wonder. So the question is, will someone want to trade for Jay Cutler, or are they going to wait till he gets released so they don't don't have to inherit his contract and whatnot? And you know, if you guys think he gets traded or released, where do you think he goes, or do you guys think he gets uh, he retires? So, Alex, let's start with you on this. Um, I think that Jay Cutler is going to probably either get traded or dropped. I don't think I don't think he's going to retire quite yet. He's still got a gunslinger arm. Um, that being said, there are a handful of teams who need quarterbacks. Uh, the Jets, that's a big team that you know a lot of people are looking at Jay Cutler to go to, but the Jets don't have. They have almost no cap space, and Jay Cutler is going to be, you know, if they trade for him, it's going to be twelve million. So, I don't think the Jets are really, unless they drop someone like Darrell Revis or someone who's going to suck up some of that uh, or to free up some of that cap space. I don't think that they're going to be able to contend for it. Um, the Bills, the 49ers, the Browns, uh, and Texans—they're all in the market for a quarterback, even though the Texans just spent a ridiculous amount of money <laughs> on yeah, uh, Osweiler. <laughs> so, um, and then the other thing is, I don't think that Jay is going to go in and change a franchise at all. I think he's someone you plug in until you can draft a better quarterback, because like I said, I don't believe that there's a lot of talent in this draft um, at the quarterback position. I think that he might, you know, be able to work with a young player for a year or two before uh, he does retire, but I don't think he's going to retire this year. Uh, you, you mentioned him being a gunslinger. Um, unfortunately, he's a gunslinger to the other team. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, needless see. to say. Needless <laughs> to say. Well, yeah, um, we know. <laughs> but uh, I, I really don't know about Jay Cutler. I mean, he... He's such an interesting player that mm. there's so much that can go on. You really don't know what's going to go on. So I could see him playing, as you said, the Jets and cutting to rollers. That may be a real possibility yeah. as from what he has stemmed here this past couple weeks with all of his off-the-field stuff. <laughs> so, But um, as you said, the 49ers, the Jets, the Car and other teams like that, they just might... I, I really don't know about Jay Cutler. So I'm not a Bears fan. I'm not a Jay Cutler fan. And I honestly really don't care much where he goes, but uh, we'll see where he ends up. Cody, you're going to have a hard time, I think, finding a Cutler fan. 
There's a, there's a few there's a few people that no one in this room at, yeah well I'm a Packer fan and I love Jay Cutler yeah, yeah, you, probably, you probably really love Jay Cutler don't you don't you no um look I don't I don't care where he goes as long as he's out of Chicago okay this is this is a subject that has been grinding me for a few years now the early parts of the Cutler era I was okay with all right it was actually it was relatively decent credit 2009 but 2010 2011. 20, even 2012, okay? I was satisfied, all right? But it's time to go. It's time to move on, all right? The, the man has run his course in Chicago and has already, already burned enough fans as it is, along with the organization that decided to re-sign him to a seven-year, $126 million contract, a- which the first year of that contract... He was the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> they finished 5-11. and 11. <laughs> How do you pay a man that much? I've been so angry at this, this situation ever since 2014 rolled around. I don't I've never been I've never been satisfied and I have not been satisfied with the organization since then. The man needs to move on. You know, I mean, the amount of coordinators that this guy has run his course with is ridiculous to say the least. Where he goes, I don't care where he goes. If he's a free agent that gets released, that's fine with me. If they trade him and get a pick, even better. I just don't want the man on the roster anymore. I think that um, they talk a lot about the intangibles of a quarterback. And when you look at Jay Cutler, you don't see any of them. He's got all of the you know tangibles. He's He's got the ridiculous arm. He can throw accurate balls, but his decision-making is awful his presence at the line is subpar to say the least um you know i just he doesn't have it going on i guess every every time an analyst brings up the skill set that jay cutler has a little bit of me dies inside because yes that that is so true the arm his arm is so strong and you know he can he can deliver those gunslinger type throws that happen to go right between two defenders and bam there's a catch but then he does silly things that that's like a loose term for me to say, say like terrible decision making, you know, makes terrible decisions, doesn't think on his feet, argues with coaches, argues, mm. with coord- argues with coordinators, doesn't get along with players, has a bad attitude. There's a list of things going on here that I could go on for the last seven years that have been an issue with Jay Cutler. And I mean, this is, I sound angry, but there's a reason why I sound <laughs> angry. Bears, yeah. because, Anger. Because Bears fans have a right this to organization. And it's I, I hate to even say this because he holds fourteen Chicago Bears passing records. Okay, mm-hmm. a man of this type of talent who has disappointed this much over the course of seven years has fourteen Chicago Bears passing records. Credit the Bears have never really had many quarterbacks to begin with that could hold such records. But needless to say, it's ridiculous that I have to say that he holds all these. And that he's going to leave this organization with one playoff appearance in seven years. That that's a fran that's our franchise quarterback that we've had. Other than that, but pre two thousand nine, it's a jumble of just terrible one or two year deals that never turn into anything. And what amazes me is back at the beginning of his tenure with the Bears, you know, when talking about when they made it to the playoffs back in twenty eleven. When they actually had a good offense, and yeah, I know your Packers, Packers beat us in the <laughs> seven NFC points. championship. Seven points. Interception. Game loser. Well, I yeah, know of course. Sherlock should have ran really back playing. interception. That, that's one thing I that sticks in my mind mm-hmm. with that game. Anyway. But it, it's more of like, okay, if you look at the skill, like the talent he had around him, okay, he had Forte at the time. That's great. Good running attack. His top two receivers were Earl Bennett and Johnny Knox. Now, I love those guys oh, and everything. Johnny Knox was one of my favorite Bears at the time. Uh, you know, very undervalued for a little guy and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. And Earl Bennett had his moments too. But we figured it out then. But a couple of years ago, we draft Alshon Jeffrey. We sign Brandon Marshall in free agency. We get Martellus Bennett. We oh, revamp goodness. the offensive line. You still have Forte. With the talent he had around him, you know, three or four seasons ago, and they couldn't even win seven or eight games a year, or they ended up doing that when Mark Trestman came around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even right, even before Mark Trestman with Lovey Smith, they couldn't get anything going. Mm-hmm. And another thing is that team was putting up monstrous yards. Like that's why they were. That's why you know he has so many of those uh, Bears records, franchise records, because he can throw for a just a buttload of yards and not get the results. You know those two: Alshon Jeffrey, Martellus Bennett, and uh, Brandon Marshall. 
those are big boys, and they can go up and catch the ball. <laughs> yes, all they right. Can. There's That's the team he should have went to the playoffs. Exactly. With. There's no 2012 reason. 2012 is the year that I feel was the most disappointing of all. Mm. I mean, the fact that they let go of Lovey Smith. I don't look. I, I'll admit, Lovey Smith had some had some years after 2006 that were questionable. But I felt a 10 and 6 season where there were decent pieces around and the 4-3 defense was coming around. I didn't think it was worth it. I thought it was a terrible idea to let him go. Yeah, you could argue he you know, could have, could have I mean, stayed around. A lot of that was derailed because they didn't have a backup quarterback, and Cutler actually was playing at a high level. You know, and they, they were 7-3. and three. They were 7-3, and three, and then they fell apart. That's right. He got fired, though, because you can't do well in the first half I, of the I season and, then, and crumble like that, I agree. and I think you, you, you have to just be, got impatient. Yeah, I agree. You have to be prepared. But I didn't think Lovie Smith should have been let go. And obviously, everyone thought Trustman was a QB whisperer, but he did, they didn't know defense. Well, yeah, then uh, we went not, through that transition of they, did, the they didn't know how to prepare the defense very well. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell if that was Stephen A. Smith over there or Zach Kyle when we were talking <laughs> about Jay Cutler. <laughs> I, I probably hate Jay Cutler as much as Stephen A. Smith. I, I'm going to be honest. I probably am harsh at times with him. I just do not like the guy. Uh, I'm up there with it, you. It's too, been don't seven worry. years. I have been, never been more disappointed as a sports fan to watch a team that I love growing up just shred itself apart over a guy that they just assume is going to turn him his career around and has never shown a reason to it, since I've watched them play. No, that I that is why I get so angry about this. It's just I I get disappointed. I, I actually, I almost at the times, I'm numb watching Bears games anymore. I expect them to lose. You know, I'm, I feel like I'm a Cleveland Browns fan. I hate to call Cleveland Browns fans out like that. <laughs> no, we're, but we're, we're not there yet. I, yeah. We're not there but yet. I almost, not one in I almost feel like I am in that section of the NFL right now. Yeah. You know, I just, I expect things to happen. If I get a win, I actually am kind of happy, but I'm like, yeah, it's not going to be like this next week. So <laughs> exactly. that's why I'm angry. That's why I sound angry on air. On air. One team I will bring up is, uh, Alex, you mentioned it, the Jets. I mean, they do have Forte. They do have Brandon Marshall. If they could maybe clear up some cap space, I mean, reunite Jay Cutler with some of his old buddies, even though... Uh, <clears throat> Brandon Marshall has publicly criticized Jay Cutler. <laughs> but, I mean, the Jets, they got weapons on offense. It's just a matter of that quarterback needs to the, be there. The thing I, I feel about that is the Jets are in one of the roughest divisions in football, and at this point, they are the worst team. Uh, they don't have any cap space. The Dolphins are a playoff team, and I think that they're going to be a playoff team next year. The Bills are on the rise, and the Jets are old. A lot of their players are old. Sure, they've got a couple of, you know, big impact players on defense that are younger, but again, I don't see that really panning out. So if you were going to spend Jay Cutler money, you're going to have next to no cap space left, and you're not going to be... Like, your future's not going to be bright. Yeah. You're going to be stuck in this. We've got Jay Cutler, Brandon Marshall for two more years, and Matt Forte on his last breath. I don't I don't see that panning out well. I mean, no. for, any, for anyone that's taking Cutler, by the way, I say good luck trying to run your offense. I mean, come on. Chicago fans have realized that offensive coordinators don't stay long, and people <laughs> assume that the coordinators are at fault. I just think it's Jay Cutler. I just think he doesn't get it. And honestly... When Mike Martz was with Chicago, that, in my opinion, was the best time that they could have kept winning, because Martz had such a grip on how the offense runs. See, a lot of these, a lot of the coordinators came through Chicago usually give Cutler the audible choices. Mike Martz was different early on; he didn't allow Cutler to do audibling much at all. Martz was usually the type of coordinator that says, "You do a play, you're going to run a play." I know how this offense works; that's how it's going to be. Cutler didn't agree with him, and that's what a lot of people assume is why Martz left. Because you're not going to keep arguing with your quarterback. But I always felt Martz was the best choice. But speaking of offenses, though, good luck getting an offense to run with him and having him make a smart, competent decision under your offense audibly out of place. That's what I got to say with trading him away or letting him go. Well, here's my thing real quick before we move on to the next topic is I think logically it would make sense for if Cutler does continue to play to go and play for a team like the Jets or the Bills, some team that can contend. He's not, there's no reason to go to the 49ers or for the 49ers. They keep saying 49ers. I don't understand that I, because why is, why is he going to go to a team that's going to rebuild when five years from now he's 
probably going to be out of the NFL. I think that the the one thing about the 49ers is they've locked in their head coach and their OC for six years. They are okay with this being a rebuilding time. They've got plenty of cap space and this is not the year to take a quarterback again. I think especially because they're waiting to rebuild um, and they're they're going to be patient. They've they've kind of dedicated themselves to patience with that six year deal. That going to the 49ers would make sense just to get the rest of the players a little bit of experience. He's not going to make them, you know, stud players, but he will help them develop the rest of the offense. I think. Yeah, he he could potentially be a. a not a permanent, but a temporary fit there. Uh, I wouldn't like that move, but you know that you know I'm not in charge of an NFL team. I'm just over here. But, <laughs> yeah. so, all right, we're going to move on to uh, running backs here in the NFC North. Uh, two of them have been making a lot of headlines lately. Uh, you have Eddie Lacy from the Green Bay Packers who needs a new contract, hmm. and the question is whether the Packers are going to resign him or if he's going to be finding a new home here in a couple of weeks. And also now there's some rumors going around that Adrian Peterson might be getting released by the Vikings due to his cap hit. Uh, there's speculation that Peterson might look to join the Giants, for example, if cut by the Vikings. Uh, I know the Giants made a lot of cap moves, uh, cut a couple of players that we'll actually talk about later on the show here. Um, and I think actually that'd be really interesting to see Adrian Peterson go join the Giants because they really need a good running back in order to contend for a Super Bowl again. So guys, tell me what you think about uh, what will become of Eddie Lacy and Adrian Peterson. Cody, let's start with you on this topic. Um, Eddie Lacy's an interesting one because... I really don't know hey, what, where I'm Eddie Lacy now, will go. Um, it's, I mean, the Colts have, they need a running back, and but I don't think Eddie Lacy's their kind of guy. I, for the Colts, in my opinion, if you're looking for a draft for a running back, I say go Dalvin Cook in this year's draft because I'm really high on Dalvin mm-hmm. Cook. As far as Adrian Peterson, I have here the top uh, odds on where he would go. And ironically, the favorite is the Green Bay Packers. And for some weird reason, and I don't get it, because, I mean, they got Ty Montgomery, who I believe can be a pretty... A pretty good running back. I don't want to see Adrian Peterson. <laughs> please please and, don't give him those ideas. <laughs> yeah, I'm twi- twitching my but, eye over here. I and mean. then they got the Packers first, then the Vikings, then my New England Patriots, which are, we've got a cluster of running backs, so I really don't agree with that. Mm. And then the Raiders, which could be a – I mean, Adrian Peterson and the Raiders, they have – the Raiders have two good running backs – but I'm not completely sold on either of them, to be honest. So that could be a destination. Then the New York Giants, which who they could sign Adrian Peterson to be kind of that gap man between. I can't remember their running back's name. Rashad, Rashad Jennings, Jennings, who was just no, released. Yeah, yeah. The, I'm talking about the other one. That the, could, I mean, that could be a value. Oh, Shane uh, Vereen. Oh, not Shane Vereen. Mm-hmm. The I think it was a rookie last year. Oh, um, oh, I, oh, I can picture him. I can't hear his name. Yeah, I, Bo- Bobby Rain? No, it wasn't yeah. Rainey. Okay, I can't remember uh, exactly what But I remember a few was. games with him. But, he had, but, yeah, he had some I breakouts. But, I remember that he was going to take a majority of their carries. And so I just believe that if you sign Adrian Peterson, that he could maybe bridge that gap to when he's ready. So Was it Darkwall? I, I think so. Darkwall Perkins? With the D. Okay, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So Adrian Peterson c- kind of bridged that gap in New York, and so that could be a very likely destination. I mean, yeah, I there's a few places he can go. Um, the big thing when it comes to aging players, loyalty only goes so far when it until performance is the issue. And you got if you're the Vikings organization, you have to wonder, you know, how loyal can we be to a franchise player that's helped shape the Vikings since 2007? And I, the question is, I don't know. I mean, because this is because he obviously went out with another tear mm. this year, ACL tear, and you're wondering how well he's going to be after another surgery. And not to mention, he's taking you're taking an 18 million dollar cap hit on a 31 year old running back, which if Who, you, I'm sorry, I just need to butt in. Three games, 37 carries, 72 yards, 1.9 yards per carry average last season. Yeah, and that was just early on. You know? Yeah. Um, you could you could shop him off, and honestly, 
unlike Cutler, which the situation there, pretty much they overblew it, where it's like, where sources are already saying, well, he's just going to be released anyway. You can probably shop him off and someone will go for him and it'll be a much faster process picking up Adrian Peterson for like a low round draft pick or something like that. You know, you're not going to get anything spectacular with his age. You know, 31 is already pretty old for running back's sake. Mm -hmm. You know, the magical 30 year mark, obviously some hurts. Matt Forte, on the other hand, didn't really get hurt by that. But Mm -hmm. um, again, though, it's Adrian Peterson. Anything can happen. This is a guy who came back from an ACL tear. ACL, LCL, ACL, and LCL. PCL. Yes. I was going to say the entire knee <laughs> came back and almost got the rushing record. So, Oof. that being said, not to mention we also have ageless wonders like Frank Gore out there who are still racking up the yards and got his own 1,000-yard season last year. So, if he goes somewhere, he can be productive. Yeah. And on, and some of these options are quite viable. I hate for him to go Green Bay. Not to mention the argument with Green Bay that I have is you, already, you have Ty Montgomery starting, so would you have Peterson as a spot back, or would you? what would you Adrian do with Peterson's that? Peterson's going to start wherever he goes. If it's Green Bay, Indianapolis, New England, wherever this man goes, he's going to be the starter. And I'm not totally sold on Ty Montgomery being full-time back. Obviously, he's you know this is going to be his offseason where he does the complete transformation yeah. and whatnot. But... I need to see a full season with him at this position, and you know, there it's still a question mark until he plays a full season at that position, and we see how he plays next year. I wouldn't full time commit to him. Obviously, try him out because he showed a lot of flashes of greatness throughout last season against the Bears. Yeah, I the Bears. that one. That was his <laughs> best yeah, one. So, I was so seeing my family there, and I had hope. And I was at a family Christmas party. Lost the party. hope again. Just kind of went numb, like I was talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, Adrian Peterson, I I don't believe he's going to uh, Green Bay. There's, I mean, Ted Thompson last the first day of um of free agency last year, Ted Thompson left his phone in his bedroom, went out, had a cup of coffee, and did a crossword. He didn't sign anybody to like the third day. I mean, he just he's not a big splash kind of guy. And at running back. I, we're kind of doing what the Giants are doing, and we're instead of running, we're just throwing screen passes and little dink and dunk passes to get our l- short yard um, yardage gains. So I don't think Adrian Peterson, especially at eighteen million dollars, is going to be in Green Bay. Because so, this, this thing brings up another question because you're mentioning Green Bay's free agency spending. Now they mentioned they were going to spend a little more this off season. So how much we think we're talking here? Um. Again, I, I'm I'm not part of the front office. So I know you're I know you're not, but but if you're thinking if you're thinking Green Bay, which you know more about Green Bay than I do, mm-hmm. what are you thinking here? Um, linebacker. So I think we need either linebackers or cornerbacks. Our safeties are all pretty like both Haha Clinton Dix and Morgan Burnett. I think Morgan Burnett is one of the most underrated safeties in the league. Um, he's stout. He's just he's great. Haha Clinton Dix is getting better every day. Um, our cornerbacks, I think that they've got low ceilings, um, and they're not okay. even at their ceilings yet. So especially now that we've dropped uh, Sam Shields, we need to go out and find a cornerback who's going to be who can maybe coach up these younger guys. Our uh, Quentin Rollins and Demarius Randall, they need help. So. That being said, I'm going to bring it back to the running back uh, and actually our house running back, Eddie Lacy. I'm a huge Lacy fan. I have his jersey. I love him. But he has struggled quite a bit lately. Um, I think that this year, if the Packers don't re-sign him, he's going to go somewhere and he's going to get a, he's, they're going to get him for a bargain of a price with a high incentives contract. So it's it's not like a big gamble you know you're you're gonna pay him a smaller base salary and then you know if you get x amount of yards we're gonna give you this bonus if you get this many touchdowns this bonus this many carries you know yada yada which is good he's a hard work he's a good kid um i think he's gonna do well circling back to adrian pearson i think we all can agree that wherever he goes he's gonna have to have an established offensive line because I don't see that he can make that real uh, cut anymore with both, with obviously his injury history. I don't see him being that much of an explosive back anymore. Mm-mm. And so I think you're going to have to kind of rely more on the offensive line to help create holes for him. And so wherever he goes, 
I know got I mean the first team that pops up which is there's no chance is the Dallas Cowboys but we all know they got Ezekiel Elliott so <laughs> if you can and get, Alfred Morris <laughs> yeah, if you can get kind of the similar offensive line that Dallas has not the great offensive line that they have but yeah, same of, same kind of players but I think that'll help Adrian Peterson say, speaking of offensive line um just had this from one of our uh, inside sources <laughs> here uh another a friend a good friend of ours dylan dinehart which if you want to listen to our other podcasts he's on a few of those at ml the uh, mlb along with the nba mm-hmm. um he just informed us nick mangold just retired which is right now it's a big deal wow. yeah i mean it's one of, one of the one of the legends at the line position Talk about this era. cap space for the Jets. Well, there you go. Yeah. Answer. <laughs> Which is, it's also a bad thing. Is uh, this like a normal thing? Because the Jets had another line and retired just last year, too. I mean, is this like a cycle now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the Jets Everyone. offensive line has always, it's been great, but it was aging. Well, I mean, it, man, he was the anchor at that position. I mean, yeah, but yeah, so he's, hurts. The, yeah. he's been the staple part of that team the nice golden beard and hair yeah. mm. you know you know like a like a like a viking <laughs> like for the wrong team i guess yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> maybe would have had a few more years if should you should have been the mascot oh yeah i you know that could be his new job should have been the mascot <laughs> right right on the bike out of the tunnel that's what yeah, he that should have done yes on that but uh i want to go back to adrian peterson w- real quick um as we end this topic here shortly um i really think i think it makes sense if the Vikings want to get rid of him, is try to trade him. I mean, get something, a couple right. draft picks. Yeah. Maybe you could get a player. I mean, if you let this guy walk, you know, I know there's a lot of question marks, and obviously you're not going to get a first round, second round draft pick for him. But even if you got a fourth round pick, a fifth round pick, or a, a selection of picks for the next couple of drafts, why not? Why are you going to let him go? Because obviously, then they got to find a way to replace Adrian, whether they sign a free agent or if they go and draft a future upcoming star, which might be the best idea personally. If the Vikings still want to be in contention to make a Super Bowl run here the next two, three years, I think you try to keep Adrian. Maybe try to see if he can knock off some of the money on his contract. Obviously, if he doesn't want to budge, then maybe that prompts you to get rid of him a little sooner rather than later. But and ideally, I think the Giants should go for him. He, Adrian's going to want to play for a contender, and he should because he's, he's already peaked, but he's already a developed player. He's ready to go in and play now and make an impact for you. Eli needs a running back. I don't know if you guys remember, but when... Um, Ahmad Bradshaw and oh, Brandon Jacobs yeah. were the running backs, the running the back team in in uh, New York when they were beating mm-hmm. uh, Cody's Patriots in the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, and I'm they slapped the Packers in the playoffs. But see, yeah. that's why it's yeah. important to be able to be a threat both on the ground and through the air. And they haven't been this with Rashad Jennings and Shane Vereen. So obviously, they they need to get younger at that position. But get Adrian Peterson. Shane Vereen has kind of disappointed me. Because I I understand you're playing with Tom Brady, and and you're gonna get your share of touches, but Shane Vereen was an in my opinion an on the rise pass catching running back, and because that's what he did he could catch screens he could go out and run routes you could spread him out at on one of the edges and have him run wide receiver routes and I just haven't seen that much in production from him in. Yeah. New York, as I thought I would. I thought he would be like their go-to, like, uh, check down. And mm-hmm. Eli just, I don't know if it's Eli, I don't know if it's Shane Vereen, because I don't keep up with the Giants, but and that could he's, attest- he's a huge disappointment for me. I mean, that could attest to the to the system that Belichick runs. I mean, we see so many we yeah. see many of these players that Belichick brings in, they fit his system because he knows how to work, work them to their best ability, and then when they go to other teams based on the talent that they had or the play time they had with New England... Why do they not fit? Well, some teams just don't know how to utilize their talents. Very true. And looking at this Adrian Peterson trade, you know, one thing that brought that I just thought about this that I that sound that they that I thought about. Um, have you ever heard of the great trade robbery with Herschel Walker? Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh. You know, ta- names do drive trades at times, and yeah. you know, if you could pull something off like that, I would. I mean. I mean, anything is possible because Wal- I mean, Herschel Walker at the time was a very solid running. Was one of the best running backs in the league. Obviously, fell off, and he was in his later years. But you know, this is kind of a similar situation. You could find someone who is greedy enough to give you a decent chunk of change to then build around later on, just to get Peterson off and avoid that cap hit. I will say. I know Latavius Murray is also a free agent this year, and he runs similarly 
to Adrian Peterson. Obviously not as good as Adrian Peterson was, but I think there's less question around Latavius Murray. So if I were an OC, I or uh, I guess not really an offensive coordinator, they don't have much say, but um, if I were a GM, I would be looking at Latavius before Adrian because, I, again, I am so, you know, We've doubted him before, and he's proven us all wrong in just the most embarrassing way. But 1.9 yards per carry, three games, coming off of an ACL injury at 31. It's hard to stomach, I'm going to admit. That's a hard one for to stomach if you're trying to pick somebody up. Mm-hmm. I mean, <clears throat> you guys probably know better. How old exactly is Matt Forte? Isn't he above? He's Forte is over the 30, 30 mark. Yeah. Is he 32 now? I think he's, he's going to be 32 next 30. year. Okay. Yeah, he's he... He had a pretty good year. But he didn't come off an ACL injury. True. But, I mean, <laughs> just if we're going off the basis he's been in, of... He's been injury-ridden lately, though. Let him go too soon. If we're going... Too soon. Just well, not, if we're just know. going by, like, he's, age, then, I mean, he had a pretty good season for an above-30 running back, which, which we know is, like, the cut point of when they start it's to it's decline. That horrible magic number that you hear around the league. Mm-hmm. 30 years old. I mean, he, he had decent production, especially with playing like a team like, you know, the Jets with all their dysfunction this year. But guys, let's move on to another subject here. The mm-hmm. Miami Dolphins are already making moves this offseason. They've been pretty busy. Uh, they've released a few defensive players here, uh, make some cap space and whatnot. And mm-hmm. they just made a trade a couple days ago for Jacksonville's tight end Julius Thomas. The Dolphins acquired him in exchange for their seventh round draft pick in this year's draft. Now, Julius Thomas once looked like a top 10 tight end in the league when he was back catching passes in Denver with Peyton Manning. He decided to take both his talents and his bank account to Jacksonville a few years ago. (laughs) However, he did not pan out. He struggled to be productive, and he dealt with a few injuries that really kept him off the field for quite some time. Now, I think this is a good move for both teams. The Jaguars can now move on in another direction here at the tight end position. And, you know, now the Dolphins, and they also have another draft pick, and then the Dolphins gained another weapon, another passing option for Ryan Tannehill when he comes back from his injury. Now, perhaps a change of scenery can help Thomas play better again, you know, on a team that really does have a better offense because we know how much Jacksonville struggled at quarterback and numerous positions there. So I want to know what your thoughts are on this trade, guys. Zach, let's get your take first this time. Um, I'm going to tell you what, first off, First off, I think this was kind of a bargain that Miami got when it comes to Julius Thomas. I mean, you're giving up, you're giving up a lineman, and you're also Albert, Albert. I think it's Albert, Albert, Albert. Albert. Yeah, Albert I mean, yeah. it's got an I in the last name, so I just gotta make sure. <laughs> but, uh, but um, you're giving up Albert, which has had some solid play from what I understand, and you're and the seven round draft pick just for a guy who's shown that he's capable of playing. I honestly think that part of the issue that he had in Jacksonville was that they just didn't utilize him right. I mean, they already had Alan Hearns, who was developing at the time when they got Julius Thomas, and they had Alan Robinson, and they have Marquise Lee. I mean, this was more the way Blake the way the way Blake Bortles passes the ball around is more of a receiver first choice, which doesn't really fit Julius Thomas, who is more of a pass catching tight end, who looks for the ball more, and they used him more in just red zone situations. I think this is a great change of scenery. However. Be forewarned going to Miami because Miami did take Cameron Jordan a few years back, who when he was with Cleveland was seen as a pass catching tight end. They didn't do much with him, so I I'm, think it's a bargain choice. But you gotta be weary about what they're gonna do with him. Sure. I'm gonna step in. Adam Gaze was the offensive coordinator in Denver when Julius Thomas was there. Yes. he knows how to use Julius Thomas. Julius Thomas had 12 touchdowns in two straight years. I mean. I, I think that this is a big deal. Um, yeah, they they featured uh, the Jags featured him in the red zone, but that's you know, that's understandable. He's not a huge threat in the passing. Like he is a big threat when used right, but he's not gonna get a ton of yards. You know, he had what was 500 yards. He was 19th in yards in 2014, but he had 12 touchdowns. So it's just kind of hard to you know say what exactly led to the success was it adam gaze was it peyton manning and his you know savvy but i think that him going to to uh the dolphins to play under adam gaze is a good thing i'm gonna say i mean your numbers are gonna look pretty good when you're playing with peyton manning Mm. (laughs) so especially that year yeah um and i think he can be uh, used as a red or red zone tight end as 
most tight ends tend to be, I mean, excluding guys like Gronk and maybe Zach uh, Rudolph in Minnesota or – I think Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota, well. But, yeah. I mean, but besides that... Jared not, Cook. Jared Cook, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. Jared Cook. <laughs> Jared Cook. <laughs> <laughs> but, Look at me, I get the catch. <laughs> that's about it. But, that's yeah, most, most tight ends now are not, like, huge pass-catching, getting yards, and they're mostly Ooh. featured in the red zone, in my opinion. And... So I think one playing with Peyton Manning helped tremendously. Oh yeah. I mean, you're not you went from playing with Peyton Manning to uh, Blake Bortles. A struggling like not year yeah. one and two Blake Bortles, so yeah. year three Blake Bortles. Yeah. So that that never helps. And so I think here in Miami, which you said Adam Gase was the offensive coordinator in Denver, I think that's going to help Julius Thomas hugely because <coughs> I think that Miami. They're on. They're like on the cusp of like challenging. I'm not obviously I'm a Pats fan, so I'm not gonna say that they're gonna beat us for the division. And I don't because, think anyone's really but, saying that. <laughs> but um, I think they yeah. could maybe make some noise in the playoffs, <laughs> and <clears throat> with that roster, with because I think if they had Ryan Tannehill in that game, I think they could have maybe, maybe just maybe hung with Pittsburgh a little bit because their defense we are hugely underrating Miami's defense. Miami's I, defense is looking to be like I'm not going to compare them to the Legion of Boom in Seattle, but they're on their way as far as being an elite defense in I mean, this league. I think they're much closer to the 2014 era 49ers. Yeah, they're they're I, bigger yeah. up front, not yeah. a great not exactly. great secondary but a good yeah. secondary. I was, and, so, oh, sorry, Zach. Oh, no, you're fine. But, you're fine. Um, I just think that he will have a huge role in Miami with Ryan Tannehill because Ryan Tannehill really doesn't doesn't focus on one guy. He likes to throw the ball around to his receivers mm-hmm. and utilize them a lot. So I see Julius Thomas having success in Miami. Yeah, I I could agree with that. I I think that it is a good system. And, yes, bringing up Adam Gase and the fact that he was his coordinator does help. Yeah, that is a tremendous help. It makes sense why they would trade for him. Though. Yeah, you know they they can do that, and I I think I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to. It. I I really like to see the resurgence of him because when Julius Thomas finally broke out in 2013, it came out of left field. Nobody saw this happening really, unless you were an insider and you knew it was going down in Denver at the time, but nobody really saw it. I mean, I remember I remember sitting at a fancy football draft and having somebody write in Julius Thomas's name in for a pick. Sitting there going, I have never heard of this kid in my life. Sure enough, I would get blazed twice in a row by the same team, thanks to Julius Thomas, mm-hmm. later in the year. I want to see that guy again. So I'm looking forward to the season with him. I think it's a great move because, again, the Dolphins need some more weapons offensively. And when you look at their receiving core, okay, Jarvis Landry's great. Mm-hmm. Devontae Parker's okay. Kenny Stills is okay, I believe. Fast. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, fast. Yeah, he's just a speed guy. <laughs> and Kenny, I believe he might be a uh, free agent coming up here. So he could be going and then... They have another deaf guy, Rashawn Scott. Haven't really heard of him. So obviously, getting another tight end. I mean, we saw with the Patriots. I always preach this example when it comes to tight ends and their importance. Before Aaron Hernandez, we found out hmm. he's not such a nice guy. <laughs> On the field, at least, what? having Gronk and Aaron Hernandez was phenomenal. You remember oh those God. days? I mean, those days before we figured out what happened with Aaron Hernandez. Yes. You mean right. the days like today when they've got Martellus Bennett, who's better than Aaron Hernandez? Exactly. Oh, Look at him. Can God. you imagine if Gronk was healthy? Wait, you Mander, really? imagine if Gronk was healthy all season with Bennett. I mean, you would. You're gonna. Brady could have thrown 50 touchdowns this year in the red zone because including big the four-game suspension. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So definitely, I think getting him and pairing him with, you know, some of these other guys, he, he he's definitely going to help. And you know, again, you gave up a seventh round draft pick for him, so. The, the reward possibility is high, and, you know, the risk, I, I mean, it, it's it's a little risky. Hopefully he can find his form again, but you gave up a seventh-round draft pick for a, at least somewhat of a quality Unless they find end. that next Tom Brady in the draft. They, they could. <laughs> this, yeah, I mean, could. who knows? <laughs> who knows? You know, but the odds you know, I'm are... Feel, feeling well, yeah, you know, feel, I'm feeling, feeling kind of silly right now, guys. I've been bad with names lately. Because somehow I ended up saying Cameron Jordan when it's Jordan Cameron, and so obviously I'm talking now. That's I just mentioned a defensive tight end play 
or defensive to end, end playing but, tight end. Yeah. <laughs> defensive. Well, I mean, JJ Watt does it. So yeah, he does it. He does it. But no, it's oh, okay. Well, I mean, Tari here's, the, here's the thing, though, because if you want to talk, I mean, Jordan Cameron. I mean, he has some. He did have some talented years in Cleveland, and you could have a dual tight end system if Gase was thinking about it. But again, he doesn't really play that too much. I mean. Usually it's a one tight end. He right. should try to do it now because he's got a nice duo. He's got and a nice. I think it is a good duo. It's set up. I'm just now thinking that it's set up pretty well. It's pretty similar to what they had in uh, Denver. You know, the guy who's really good after the catch, Demarius Thomas, um, not Devontae Parker, but. Uh, the Jarvis Landry. He's yeah. really good after the catch. Um, you have the same exact tight end. And then you've got the speed guy, Kenny Stills, if he comes back, wicked fast. And then Emmanuel Sanders was wicked fast. So it's it's kind of sim- And then you've got a thump right running back. Mm-hmm. This could be a very dangerous Dolphins team. Uh, Hopefully not. Yeah, for the sake <laughs> yeah, of your I, Patriots. Sure for you. but <laughs> I, think you, I think you guys are still fine for a while. I mean, because we also yeah. have to remember, Ryan Tannehill's hurt. He may not start right away. Mm-hmm. He's got that ACL injury, so it might be Matt, uh, Matt, Matt Moore. Ryan, Matt Moore's uh, show here for a little bit, but we'll have I to see. I think he'll happens. start because yeah. wasn't it? It wasn't a tear, was it? Yeah. It was a partial tear. It was partial a partial tear. tear so. I, so his health be, is going to be a little bit questionable, no matter what. Even yeah. if he does play, so obviously getting him some help we'll, see how it goes. will be nice. But okay, moving to another topic, sticking with offense and people that catch the football. The New York Giants recently cut wide receiver Victor Cruz. The salsa dancing Cruz used to be the number one wideout for the Giants at the beginning of his career. However, after suffering a season-ending injury back in October of 2014, Cruz has really struggled, guys, to really get back on the field again. And when he did, he wasn't too productive, and hence that's why they got rid of him. Plus the emergence of Odell Beckham Jr. and even Sterling Shepard last year in his uh, you know rookie season. Again, Cruz was cut for another cap-saving release here. Uh, shortly after being released, he reportedly visited the Carolina Panthers. Now, Cruz, in my opinion, guys, is definitely going to find another team to play for. The question is, will he ever return to his salsa dancing form? I don't think so. And, you know, a team like the Panthers seems like a good option because Cruz doesn't have to face the pressure of trying to be a number one wideout again. The Panthers need help in the passing attack, and, I mean, he could be a great number two, number three option for that team or some other team or even a team like the Bears that... They have a lot of guys going the free agency, especially Alshon Jeffrey. So maybe mm-hmm. Victor Cruz is a little security blanket for the time being, as you know, a bridge or whatever into the future as we improve in that category. So, guys, what do you think about the Giants releasing Cruz? Do you think it was a good move or bad move? And also, where do you think he might go? Alex, why don't you start us on this one? I'm probably going to be higher on Cruz than almost anybody else. Uh, and I've got I've got a little bit of reason. So before the injury, he had a 1,500-yard season, a 1,000-yard season, and a 998-yard season. So close. But that year, Eli threw 27 interceptions. So that's not entirely on him. That was Eli being a derp. Um, But (laughs) the thing I want to... That word choice. I'm going to just have to stop. (laughs) That word choice. Just think of that word and then picture Eli when he's got those confused looks. That actually goes... That actually goes... Just imagine Whoa. somebody photoshopping Eli's face with cross eyes. That's a new meme. Right. It's a meme. It says derp under it. All right, I'll work on that right away. Um, but I want to focus on his yards per catch. No, he hasn't put up a lot of yards lately, but his career average is 15 yards per catch, and last year it was 15 yards per catch. No, he will never be as good as he was those first three years, but he will still be good this year, and I think he's poised for... I. I don't want to say a thousand yards, but I think he could get into the 900 yard range. Um, and here's why: they, the Giants had him listed as the number two wide receiver, but he was the obvious number three receiver. Sterling Shepard had 105 uh, targets. Odell Beckham had 169, and Cruz had 75. So he still got some, but it's he's saying, you know, just if I'm Victor Cruz in. Uh, in an interview, I'm going to say, I'm not, no, I'm not going to outrun or out jump a lot of these younger guys, but I'm smarter than them. He's not a PR nightmare. Um, and he, he's still producing. I'm st- like, he's got what, what, you know, what you want in a receiver. I think some teams that I would look at for him to land at Carolina, Bills, Texans, Bears, Ravens, 49ers, maybe, maybe not. But my favorite spot, if I could, if I could choose, would be the Titans. 
because he wouldn't he'd be the starting guy and he wouldn't get a bunch of yards but what he would do is he would coach up all those young receivers and he would make Marcus Mariota look like a stud see I think in my opinion he'd be the number one option in Tennessee I think. he would be the and yeah probably uh, I'm, that's what I mean I'm I'm of that belief of I don't think he's that number one guy anymore I mean that injury that he had was really really bad and i think hurt his career um Ooh, i could see the ideal team for me would be a team like denver where the pressure if you go to denver it's emmanuel sanders demarius thomas and then i they have so many receivers <laughs> <laughs> that i can hardly name them all but then Victor Cruz, you'd probably slide him at the three. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where he's best. Pressure would not be on him to perform that well, obviously. You still have to perform, but you wouldn't hold him to the same standards as your one and your two. And then you just he may surprise you because I don't think I don't think he's got a thousand yards in him. I think he has a bit more than five hundred and eighty six this year, which was, as you said, because obviously Odell and Sterling Shepard were taking some of his targets. I think if a guy like Victor Cruz could help um, a young Paxton Lynch or uh, what's the other guy's name in Denver? Oh my gosh. Simeon. Trevor Simeon. Simeon. Yes, I don't know why I'm spacing that. That's good. I I think he could help like one of those young quarterbacks like mature and develop. And so I see Denver as the ideal spot. You know, I do like the uh, thought of Carolina, honestly, because you do have Kelvin Benjamin. Yep. But you, but I mean, bes- I mean, Ted Gibb Jr. Okay, I mean, he's, he's okay. A, he's been he's all right. Okay. There's, a, he's a, he's getting on the back end of his career by now. Yep. You know, maybe it's best to start. Honestly, you could with Ted Ginn's speed, so you could still move him into. You can move him into a slot spot instead of uh, instead of Ryan, instead of Brown, instead of Brown. You know, have Brown as kind of just come in maybe for a four receiver set, and then you could put Cruz on the outside on the on one of the two wings. You have then Ted Ginn as a slot. That's what I would do if I was Carolina. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't. Cruz isn't the number one anymore. Mm-hmm. I think he can be a number two. You know, I think that he is a solid number two to spot any All Star receiver on a roster. And honestly, his cut was just it's a cap casualty. He. It's been he's been in the league for about five years now and six yeah six yes and the injuries obviously t- two years ago the, when they started that it just kind of derailed it and obviously if you have a guy like Sterling Shepard who is roughly the same size and generally the same type of play who slightly outplayed you maybe it's it's best to move on Shepard was only in his rookie year and was one of the more impressive receivers in this draft yeah. class. So it probably makes sense to move on. You know, and he'll find a place to sign. Yeah, and, you know, my, my saying he goes to the Titans, it's not about him being overly productive there. It's about him helping the team in future endeavors. Well, they, um, but, you know, if, if, like, for him, it would be great to go uh, to... There, there's just a lot of teams that he could blend in and be kind of a 1B kind of guy you know if he doesn't have to go up against a top cornerback every play then i can see him succeeding but yeah against a top cornerback at this point i mean you see that's why i don't think tennessee would be a good fit because he'd be probably the number one and the team would probably put their number one corner on him Mm -hmm. so that's why i see denver because most teams now have two solid corners and the, it starts to get a little shaky for most teams when you get into the three in your fourth corner. And see, that's why I see Denver, because he, he would be the third option. Mm-hmm. And so he could, he'd could he probably be going up against not as great competition, so he could probably succeed better. I think what we're getting at here in this conversation is basically he still has a couple years at least left uh, of play in him, and obviously there should be at least plenty of options for him. Ideally, I can see him going to a playoff contender like, you know, uh, Denver, 
uh, you know, the Panthers, maybe even a team like Minnesota, who really is struggling to find Ooh. a lot of legitimate receivers. Actually, I like that a lot. That would be a good one. Or Adam Thielen would take the pressure. Sorry, go, go. No, 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 you're good. <laughs> See, we're, thinking, we're, we're, think, we're thinking the same here. You got the idea what I what I was thinking about with that team uh, specifically. But and but even if it's not a contender, I, I just feel like someone's going to want to take him. Maybe even, obviously, he'll want to play, play for a playoff contender, but there are teams like the Bears – the Browns, the 49ers, it's like, I don't want to play for them. But at the same time, if that's your options, I'm sure one of those teams would take take him just, again, to provide leadership. You know, Titans, I don't think it's a horrible move. You're getting an experienced receiver who, I don't know if he's going to have enough production to be a number one wide receiver, but he definitely could be a number two or a number three there. But I like this discussion we had on this, and I think it's fair to say we all have at least some kind of hope for Victor Cruz to continue. But we're getting close to the end of our time, fellas, so let's get into one more a uh, question here. This this is going to be a good one. Um, so we got uh, Patriots tight end Martellus Bennett, who is going to be dipping his toe into the free a- free agency waters here in a couple of weeks. He's apparently considering leaving the Pats. Uh, you know, Martellus is just like his brother Michael, in my opinion. They both want money and they both want to be the center of attention. They're they're mm-hmm. they're, they're just those kind of guys, which is which is okay, I guess. Uh, I do not think the Pats are going to want to offer him a huge contract since they already have Gronk. Plus, they're not really known for overly paying guys. Nope. And knowing Bennett, he'll be like, okay, fine, whatever, I'm going to leave. So I know Bennett doesn't want to play second fiddle to Gronk either. I mean, obviously he didn't have the greatest production, but he still fit in nicely. But Martellus knows he could put up bigger numbers, and I believe that. I see Martellus going to a different team this spring, guys. Um, so what do you guys think? Should the Pats really try to re-sign Bennett and go back to that uh, duo of tight ends again like they used to have a couple of seasons ago? And do you think Bennett should stick with the winning franchise, or do you think the tight end will or should go elsewhere? Cody, let's start off with you since you were the Patriots fan in the house. <laughs> um, I think it's quite obvious what my answer will be. Um, I think we need to keep Martellus because... As you said, we the two tight end system has been a staple of our offense. And with a guy like Martellus, he takes the pressure off Gronk every now and then because Gronk, there will be some games where, obviously we didn't see it this year much because Gronk got hurt, and but there will be those games where Gronk can't be that like 100 receiving yard game and we'll need Martellus to have like maybe a five reception 60 yard game or something like that that'll take the pressure off Gronk and make the defense look elsewhere and see the problem is with our offense is I really don't since we tra- we traded um I think we had AJ Derby uh, we, we traded him to Denver earlier in the season, and he was, I think, the only other tight end on our roster. So it was um, a little bit of see if Gronk, because excuse me, if Bennett goes, then all as I said, all the pressure is on Gronk to perform, and I think we need that second tight end to have our offense run smoothly, and so. Brady can distribute the ball to everyone that he likes to distribute the ball to. So I think we should keep him, and if he ends up asking a lot of money, like Jamie Collins stupidly earlier this year was wanting Vaughn Miller type <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, after we were in that. Um, yeah, we're like, all right, have fun in Cleveland. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, if he asks for too much, we will have to let him walk, but I would hate to see him go. I think that Martellus Bennett should be the Patriots' number one priority. Um, I would say that um, Garoppolo would be, because Garoppolo is just slowly turning into, you know, Tom Brady mindset, and that's exactly what you need for Bill Belichick. But, I mean, Bennett does it all. He blocks, he catches in the fe- open field, he Very catches blocking type. in mm-hmm. the red Extremely zone. I, yeah, he's... And I watched the post game uh, interview at the Super Bowl with him, and he was, you know, he was just beaming. He was so happy. He Dancing was, with our cheerleaders. Yeah, exactly. I think that he's he's very happy in New England, and I think he would take a slight pay cut to stick with New England. Uh, but that being said, you're going to have to. I don't see you being able to sign all three: Martellus Bennett, Garoppolo, and. Um, Hightower. Hightower, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, you also have 62 million in cap space, so. The, 
I disagree with you on the Garoppolo and Bennett. I think our number one priority should be Dante Hightower because we already yeah, let one you know, of our, I actually have to agree with that. Yeah, we already let one of our linebackers go in Jamie Collins. And so I've been on the record of saying we should have placed the franchise tag on Dante Hightower yesterday <laughs> and because I think he's that important to us. Sorry about your mic right there. That's <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, I mean, I think Hightower is that important. Obviously, I think Martellus Bennett is right behind Dante Hightower. I think we should go franchise tag, uh, uh, Hightower, excuse me, and then focus our attention on signing Bennett because he is a huge part of our offense. See, I don't know if Bennett's going to be around, honestly, because some, some initial reports, he wants more money than what Gronk's being paid. Gronk's being paid roughly $7 million a year right now. Yikes. He's being, Bennett's roughly asking for $8 million, which I don't know if you are going to get more money than Gronk. I think, no. I mean, Gronk, I think Gronk's the overall better receiving type, and it's just the injury issues the injuries. is a problem. And honestly, I think that's also why he's testing it because I don't, knowing the Patriots, I don't see, I don't see them shelling out the money like that. Yeah. So, knowing that and seeing that he had what our grade A receiving stats for a tight end this year, I would hands down see him going somewhere else if they give him the right price. And honestly, a few one of the speculated places as of late is actually Indianapolis. I mean, if he goes to the Colts, I mean they got. They would have Dwayne Allen, who is emerging, and then you got Martellus, and Martellus could like block. Martellus yeah, can't block. <laughs> yes, that's what that's what they need in Indy. But um, they, I think Martellus could like mentor Dwayne Allen and like just give him that extra teaching that maybe he's not getting from so because who who's Dwayne Allen like learning from? I. <laughs> I'm sitting here just thinking, like, going through my mind, like, oh, this guy would be good for Indy. Oh, this guy would be... I, yeah. Everyone yeah, would be you, good for... Indy yeah. like, needs so much. Uh. <laughs> they really yeah. Man, I'm thinking, And I'm thinking, mentor, if you follow Martellus Bennett on Twitter, some of his stuff is so <laughs> silly. <And> he's, <laughs> some of his, he's an entertaining some of his, guy. Some of his interviews are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, one of his nicknames back in Chicago was uh, the Black Unicorn. That's what he. That's what he called himself. Yeah. And I think so. he even writes like children's books. Yes, he does write children's so, books. I mean, and he, they, he is quite the character. The the Colts just lost, lost Pack McAfee, so you yeah. need a new jokester, you know. He and the that. the Bennett brothers are just a comedic duo to just oh, they follow. Ripped, they ripped Jay Cutler a new one last so, year. Good. Oh yeah, that was good. <laughs> completely savage mode. All right, guys, <laughs> let me give you my take real quick, and then I'll Go close up it. shop here. So, obviously. Uh, I think Martellus Bennett, it'd be great to see him stay in New England. I think the duo of Gronk and him would be fantastic if Gronk could get healthy, hopefully. And even if he, if he, even if he doesn't, and it seems like durability is going to be an issue with Gronk from here on out, maybe, because he's been hurt the last couple of years, having Martellus Bennett to fill his void and maybe become more of a focus while Gronk recovers or if he deals with some injuries, that'd be smart, too, because, you know, Rob Hausler is the only other signed tight end now. And Hausler's been bouncing around the NFL for a while now to multiple teams. So he's definitely not a great option. Um, It really comes down to are are the Patriots going to open up their bank account for him? And I think they should to a reasonable price. I say he deserves close to Gronk money. He shouldn't get more than Gronk. And obviously there's going to be a couple teams out out there that are going to be willing to give him a lot of money. One that stands out to me would be the Arizona Cardinals. Jermaine Gresham is their tight end right now. He's going mm-hmm. to free agency. Cardinals stealing all of our players. <laughs> yep, and also, also, but, but I think honestly, the Cardinals have been struggling recently, and I think their title window is actually closing, not opening or staying open anymore. I, I think agree. it's starting no, to close with, with Larry Carson. Fitzgerald. Yeah, with yeah. Larry getting older, and he's going to yeah. be retiring soon. Then uh, Carson Palmer. He said he's coming back, but how much longer are you going to have yeah. Carson Palmer? And I mean, he can only do so much. But obviously. They could use a, another weapon in a guy like um, Martellus hmm. Bennett, so that would be a potentially decent move. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. My prediction is he's going to leave just because he's going to want too much money, but we'll see what happens. Uh, it's going to be really exciting here in a couple of weeks when free agency starts. But that's all the time we got today, guys. Uh, great conversation. This was a lot of fun, as so, always. You know, until next time. Next time we're on the air, we'll be able to talk about. You know the moves that are, uh, some more moves that happen, so that'll be fun. So that's all the time we have for this edition of After Further Review. Uh, looking for more? Check out Cardinal Sports Live every Thursday on Cardinal Vision Channel 57 or online on the CSL YouTube page. 
Again, you can find this podcast and future ones from various branches of the CSL Podcast Division on the CSL YouTube page, SoundCloud, or on our website, www.bsucsl.com. You can follow each of us on our own respective social media accounts as well for Ball State sports coverage and various national coverage as well. This has been a presentation of Cardinal Sports Live in association with WCRD 91.3. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful weekend.